Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. And also, Happy New Year if you're watching this about the right time, about the time it's gone live, uh, and it's close to New Year for you. Uh, what I wanted to do today, in the lead up to the Delirium Everywhere event, which I'm actually going to sit out myself, I just need a bit of a break from Path of Exile, and which I recommend people do take one, uh, if you're obsessed with the game as I am. Uh, you do need to take a break every now and again, but uh, I wanted to put together a little bit of statistics on just how much damage you're going to need in order to deal with various bo bosses at various levels of Delirium. So what I've done is I've taken some empirical testing that was done by Reddit user 3308. Now what 3308 did was they went into maps and they attacked bosses with skills that had no uh, that had no sort of um, scaling of their damage, no variance in their damage. So they always did both minimum and maximum damage with their attacks. And they measured how much damage they suffered as a result of Reflect. And their findings were pretty simple, uh, that the monsters have a less percentage damage taken, and that percentage is equal to 96% of the Delirium level. So what this means is that the amount less damage taken at, say, 20% Delirium is 19.2%. At 40%, it's 38.4%. At 60%, it's 57.6%, and so on and so forth. But what you're really concerned about as a player is generally monster effective hit points. And so I've put together this spreadsheet that's got that information there. So for instance, you can see that at 40% Delirium, uh, monsters have 162.34% effective hit points. At 60% Delirium, 235.85%. At 80% Delirium, 431% uh, hit points. And at 100% Delirium, 2,500% effective hit points. And you'll notice that these last few points of delirium from 96% to 100% is almost exactly a doubling of monster effective hit points. That give you a bit of a sense as to just how the scaling on delirium works and just how sharply asymptotic it is as you get close to 100%. It's actually possible you could extrapolate this formula out to 104% and it would still continue to make sense. Uh, but beyond 104%, it would break down and monsters would have negative, uh, negative hit points instead of positive huge numbers. But also of interest, you might find, uh, I've taken what I feel is a typical map boss, tier 4, 8, 12, and 16, and their hit points. Now, the typical map boss that I've chosen is the Wharf boss, Stone of the Currents. This is not a boss that's regarded as particularly dangerous or particularly difficult. Uh, but I've taken their hit points, which are to the nearest thousand, 782,000 at tier 4, 1.903 million at tier 8, 4.349 million at tier 12, and 11.141 at tier 16. And I've extrapolated out what that's going to be at every level of delirium. So for instance, if you got a tier 4 wharf map and you knew that it was 77% delirious, uh, how dangerous is that map boss going to be? Uh, it's going to be about... 2.79 million hit points, which is somewhere in between a tier 8 and a tier 12 map uh, in terms of how difficult it's going to be to take that boss down. What if instead of being 77% it was 99%? Then it's basically about the same hit points as the uh, as the uh, tier 16 version of the map. So that's something that can give you a bit of a sense as to whether or not you want to engage a map boss, uh, and I'll leave ultimately that decision up with you. Lastly, there's the question of how much damage the bosses do. Now, here, there's a lot less firm evidence that's available to us. Uh, so, 3308's testing involved getting hit by the goddess's beam. So, this is the goddess of justice, uh, the boss that mimics Izaro's uh, mirage archer, sort of thing that sits on Izaro's back. And that boss does a certain fixed amount of damage before its tether expires. However, uh, the formula was less less derivable. You couldn't take, uh, you couldn't extract the data into a clear formula. And so here I have made an estimate. Uh, and so I don't know how accurate this damage column is. Uh, I believe it's going to be reasonably accurate, but it's also not going to be exact. So when we say that monsters at 100% delirium do 130% damage, what this really means is that a player with 6,500% hit points is going to be about as durable as a player with 5,000 hit points would be in 0% Delirium. Uh, this is only considering additional monster, uh, monster damage that's dealt from Delirium. Of course, the fact that the monsters are 25 times as durable means they'll be around for longer, they'll be hitting you more often, and additionally, there'll be additional dangers from the white and red pustules that you might step over, releasing additional monsters from the white ones, and volatile dead-like orbs from the red ones. Uh, but anyone that's running 100% Delirious content will be quite familiar with that. 
So hopefully this is useful. Uh, as for build suggestions, I think you want to play very much in the meta if you're going if you're going to be playing in the Endless Delirium event. I think it's going to be very, very, very punishing of both weak builds and mediocrity. Uh, it's going to be something where you want to bring out the big guns, play something ridiculously overpowered like Seismic Trap. Uh, but ultimately, I'll leave that up to you and, you know, maybe you're quite happy with playing a character that sort of brick walls around level 85 because you can't survive in content long enough to gain more levels. If you've got comments or questions, definitely fire away below. Uh, I will be taking it easy for the next week or two, so it might be very slow on the replies. Uh, but may your Valobs have interesting results, and I will see you in 2022.